So it's Susan Clay speaking from Gourmet Quilter and I'd uh, just like to run through uh, some idea, an idea we've had with, to make up a quilt using these delicious fabrics from Nutex wholesalers who do some wonderful fabrics here in New Zealand that are available all over the place of course. And so what they've done is a, a wonderful range here with all these uh, diggers and things on. It's called Under Construction. And so we've got a nice dark background, a light background. We've got some wonderful words all relating to diggers and various aspects of bulldozers and things. A nice print with all sorts of things going on, a nice stripe, and another very nice, useful, um, sort of neutral type of fabric to go with it all there. So I've designed a quilt to, to use those, and I've called it that roadwork quilt. Um, and I'm still making the quilt, so that's what we're going to be running through. So this is what I've come up with. So we've just done some fairly simple um, strip blocks down the sides and then some roadwork sign type blocks to come down there. So I thought we'd go through some of how we've achieved that and I've also included, because of using those um, delicious fabrics there, I've included also just some solids to help with these road sign blocks that all coordinate nicely with those. So that's what we're using under construction by Nutex. Let's get those out of my way. I've already cut my quilt out and I've actually started a little bit of the work because I didn't think you needed to see me cutting strips and sewing strips together. But we'll go through how to put the blocks together. So there's going to be a pattern available um, possibly in a quilt store near you or on my website gourmetquilter.com. So this is the pattern. We've got the picture on the front. We've got the fabric information. And then inside we've got all sorts of information, of course, as you do in a pattern. We've got lots of cutting. Um, so a lot of the cutting is fairly straightforward. The, strip, the, the blocks for, this, for the sides here are just strips joined together. And then there's a little bit more fiddly cutting and sewing for the actual road sign blocks. So the cutting is all there, tells you what things are for. And some general information that tells you that all the seam allowances are included. They're quarter inch. How to do the applique. There's a very small amount of applique. It's mostly piecing. The applique is just uh, the little exclamation on the sign there and the word stop on the stop sign. Otherwise, it's going to be all piecing. So I have suggested that you might like to start with the simple blocks, which are the strips. So in the cutting, it told us how to do the strip cutting and for the length and everything. And so there's five of these blocks that are just strips of fabric sewn together. And then there's also five very similar blocks, but they're longer. But again, with just the strips sewn together that go on the other side of the, of the road sign blocks. So as I said, all that information is in there. They're just strips sewn together. I've pressed the seams in towards that gray strip. Other than that, there's nothing really unusual about those. So we'll pop those to one side and we might start work on this this uh, central road cone block. So that's this block in the middle here, um, showing a, ro a road cone. They seem to be pretty universal. Everywhere I go lately, I see road cones. Everyone's doing road works, no matter which country you're in, and they all have road cones. So I've already cut my pieces out, and there's a little bit of fiddly cutting on this. So I'm going to just go through how we're going to do that. So initially, we just start off with the square for the main part of the road cone, and it has a white stripe attached to the bottom. So I have already attached that stripe just so that we're kind of ready to go with that. And then we had to cut out two rectangles for the sides that are going to be cut to shape. And this is also going to be cut to shape. So we'll go through that so that we get the shape of the road cone. Then there's going to be a strip across the bottom for the base of the road cone. And then there's the border strips that go around the outside. So to that end, we will get this sorted. So I'm going to cut this first. This started out with a six and a half inch square and a one and a half inch strip sewn on the bottom. And we needed to, to cut this so that what we're going to do is come in. So I use my board a lot for this sort of thing because I've got all those measurements already in place for me on the board. You could mark things if you chose to with a pencil um, if that makes it easier for you. So what I want to do is come along the top edge here two and a half inches and then place my ruler on so that I come through there. So I can see by the dots on my board where the two and a half inch is actually going to be there because that's two and a half out to there. I'll get this right. 
So I've come along two and a half inches from this edge to there and I want to place the ruler so that it goes right through that corner there and that two and a half inch up there. And I'm going to cut that off. So we don't actually need that piece. And then I want to do the same thing on this side. So again, come along two and a half inches and I can see that that's where the half is and through that corner there. So these are both the same, just mirror imaged basically. And so that's my road cone ready for its sides. And now we need to cut the sides. So you could actually place these back to back. Don't have them the same way up because you want them in opposite directions. And you could cut them both together or you could cut them separately like we have with the cone. And we're going to position it. So this is four inches wide by the same height as this, which is seven and a half inches by now. And what we want to do here is come along here, the bottom edge this time along one and a half inches. And then we want to come out through the top up there. So one and a half inches, place it so that it's going through that top corner there and cut that off. And now that's going to sit either side because we had them cut facing each other or back to back. They will be the right shape. And when you position that there, you can see that those are the right shape and size to go on there. So we don't need those little bits. And then we're just going to take this to the machine and sew these on. So when you're sewing things on funny angles like this, you need to set it so that those little ends, so this, can you see that that navy ex extends just a little bit beyond the red of the cone and the white extends just a little bit beyond there. So that, so that where they cross over is your seam allowance, your quarter inch seam allowance and then we're just going to stitch that on so far so good quarter inch seam allowance and just now you are on a bit of a bias edge here so that means it's a little bit stretchy when it's on not cut straight with the grain of the fabric so just be careful that you don't let things stretch out of shape there Well, do the other one. We are going to press these, but we might sew them both on first. Again, just have that little white bit extending and that navy bit extending at the top. Everything should fit quite nicely there. that. I'm going to press that out towards the navy. And we might want to just check the size of that block at the moment because we're going to sew this bit on. What we're wanting it to be is 8 inches it, we want it to measure eight inches wide and it is a touch wide and I did that just in case there was any little problems and so we want to center it on the water you could at this stage if you wanted to do a very light finger press so that that line will line up with a line on your board and just trim it on the sides here back so that it's eight inches wide and that means that if there was any little problems you've got a little bit of allowance there not that there should be any problems, of course. So we'd cut a block that it measured eight inches wide. I had a strip to go along the bottom to make the base of the road cone um, that was one and a half inches wide. So I've sewn that on there. So we know that's all going to fit. And then I was just checking the height and we needed to make sure that it was an eight inch square block. And it was a touch tall, which I had done intentionally because of the possible problems that you have when you're sewing um, funny angles together. So I've just trimmed off that small amount at the top there and um, so we've now got an 8 inch square block. So that's pretty much it but it needs to have its surrounds put on. So I've got all those ready cut here 
and we're going to pop two sides on here on either side and we're going to pop a top and the bottom on and then we're going to pop these two sides on as well they're kind of like a sashing when you look at the pattern of the quilt there's this sashing line down here but we actually do that as part of the block and then there's a long sash between each row so I'm going to go ahead and, and do all that and then I'll show it to you before we move on to the next stage. So I've put my block together, I had my row cone, and I've put my sides on, I've put the top and bottom on, and then I pop these two blue sash bits on the sides. And I'll just make a little comment on this uh, blue fabric that I'm using. It's got this little triangle design on, which is really fun, um, but it does kind of go in one direction. So I've made sure that my sides go in the one direction, particularly on the sash, more so than on the piecing inside, because that perhaps will show more on the overall thing of the quilt. Um, but you may be using a fabric that doesn't have that, of course, in which case it doesn't matter. But if it's a one-way direction, make sure that all your rows are going to be the same on the sash bits. So I've got my block now, and so because I've already made my other strip blocks, we could go ahead and join these up into a row, put the short one on one side, put a long one on the other side, and then I could even go ahead and pop my sashing. So this is this long strip that was in the cutting notes to cut that goes right the way across. And the same thing applies with these. Keep these up if you're using a fabric with a direction on it, like these little triangles all go one way. I would keep them going the same way on the sashings. Your fabric may not have a little one-way direction, which won't matter then. So you could go ahead and make that whole central block now, because that goes, that's that whole middle one. We only had to make one row cone. Um, and you could put the sashing and everything and make that, make that complete strip at this stage. So I'll come back in the next video and show you how to make uh, one of these other roadside blocks.